Hey, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. It looks okay. All right. More or less. So how okay. are you? Jonathan? How are you? How are you? Uh, I think I can hear you. Your microphone, I think, it is. Can you hear me, Nathan? Hello. Oh, okay. Now, yes, can you, yes. Can you hear me, yes. John? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. How are you? How was your day today? Ah, always a good day. Always a good day. Lots of things to get done. Always a busy. Uh, always on schedule, but good. Good. Okay. Do you take some vitamin vitamins? No, uh, no, no, no. Do you practice some uh, exercise like uh, jogging or something like that? No, no, no. Just my lifestyle. Of, remember, I remember I walk to work, so I don't I don't take the bus and I don't drive a car. So I, I walk to work and I walk back home. Uh, and then my job is usually walking. Uh, I only sit down when I give the classes online, but when I give and I have to walk. Okay. Mm -hmm. I th thought that you have another activity, you know, because sometimes uh, when you work uh, with your mind all the time, you sometimes get tired and it's yep. very, you know, for your shape, doing mm -hmm. some, some other kind of things, you know. No, no, no. But like I said, on Sundays we do, we go out. So we go you go out with your family. With the family, we go. For example, we we go hiking, we go to the volcanoes, we go to the lakes. We so we, I don't do exercise, but we do things that require activities. Okay, so it's mm -hmm. uh, different kind of activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for example, even for example, my family and I we go to we go to breakfast on Sundays, right? We go out to we we go to have breakfast. But we don't go by car. We walk. We walk from our house. We walk down to Denny's, like one, mm -hmm. and then we walk back. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was working in Bayer. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there, there are many. There's still buses there that that they are very busy and they finish the work very, very very late at night. So uh, most of them practice, uh, used to practice, I, I guess, uh, Pilates, Pilates. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And because they say this is a, a way to, to for, uh, for the, for, uh, forget, for forgetting the stress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some, pre some people practice Pilates, others have yoga. Other like that. running or exercise or bicycling. I, I just have I just have a good lifestyle. I try to oh, okay. Uh-huh. I, I, I try to maintain a balance between different things. So mm -hmm. so it's it's a little bit different because for most people, most Salvadorians, they don't walk to work. And if I say, hey, let's go, let's go eat, the people ah in the cart, no, let's walk. Oh, but it's, it's two kilometers and that we talk, we talk when we walk, we have, we eat and then we talk on the way back. But yes, uh -huh. <laughs> they forget, they forget this interaction. It's all about the phone and the music and ah, you are in the car in silent, the entire, yeah. just looking out the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it depends on the place you, when you, if you want to walk two kilometers, it depends. Like in Soyapango, is I think it's very difficult to walk two kilometers. I used to go in Soyapango. I used to go to from La Conacaste. Uh, uh, I used to walk from La Conacaste to Unicentro Soyapango. Ah, some some ways, some ways, yeah. 
Yeah, way. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, like I said, it's about you. You have to know where you are because you're not going to walk in La Campanera. You're not going to walk. Uh -huh. It's just a matter of, of of being used to. But in reality, I think that in El Salvador is very uh, connected by your neighborhood. So if the people in your neighborhood know, they leave you alone. No problem. Uh huh. Yes. The, the, the problem is that they don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Do you drink coffee? Um, not usually. Only two times a week, usually. I usually drink coffee on Sunday and once during the week. Ah, okay. Hello, good evening. Okay. Good evening. <laughs> how are you guys? Good, how about you, Wilbur? I'm good, too. All right, good. Yeah. Well, it's good Ready to, to, to practice English. Exactly, that's the idea. Today we're going to be looking at unit uh, three and four, right? So yeah, yeah. practice three Spanish. <laughs> yeah, we have the idea from how we are supposed to do unit three and four, right? Uh, same thing as before, and we go up with our partners, and then with our partners, we have the ideas for reviewing them. Okay, before we get started on units three and four. Um, are there any questions about uh, one or two or any questions from any of the other topics that you're not sure about? No. No, the, the others are okay. Well, not yet. Maybe, they are okay. uh, maybe after watching the videos again, we will. It usually happens, right? That after the video, yeah. oh, I didn't remember, or mm -hmm. this, or, or or how does this work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then, perfect. So the same thing. We're gonna watch the videos, practice the conversation, look at the grammar, and we'll start off with partners. Or did anybody else have any questions, just in case? Then let's start off then, if everybody's clear. With section three, right? With section three. Right now, only section three. That's correct. Right now, only section three. Let's start. Rodrigo? Yes. I sent you to a group. Did you get the invitation?
Rachel, I am so glad you're home. I was wondering if you could help me out. Yeah. What's up, Anne? I need a big favor. My boss just called, and he wants me to go out of town this afternoon to meet with a client. That's great. Yeah, but my parents are out of town, too, and my little sister Megan is staying with me. Would you mind if she stayed with you tonight? I could pick her up tomorrow by 10. Uh, no, I don't mind at all. Uh, what time did you want to bring her over? How about now? <laughs> Hi, Megan. Did you want to spend the night here? Okay. Great, uh, but I have a report to work on tonight. Don't worry, we planned ahead. She brought her homework. They might be okay. Keep herself busy. Fantastic. I, I have to run. Thanks a million. Oh, you're welcome. All right. So I'm going to send you to the group. We're taking a look at these videos. Um, hang on. And then with your partners, you're going to discuss and make sure that everything is clear reviewing the unit, unit three. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. 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 Meg, have fun, but do your homework, okay? Don't worry, Ann. I will. Bye. What grade are you in, Megan? Eighth. Hey, you've got the Twilight movies. Can we watch them? Uh, sure, but I think you should do your homework first. Okay. Good. Uh, you can work in here. I have some work to do, too, so I'm going to go to my office. Okay. coming good i did half of my math problems that's good but you still have some more work to do you can watch the movie when you're done okay rachel yes i'm done is it okay if i watch the movie now yes Can I have something to eat? Uh, it's only four in the afternoon. So? Um, okay, how about some carrot sticks and an apple? What else have you got? I have some strawberries and whipped cream. Anything else? Okay, how about a pizza? I have one in the freezer. Plain? I think it's a veggie pizza? That sounds good. I love this part. I know. It's so romantic when Edward tells her he loves her. Does he stay with her? You mean you've never read any of the books or seen the movies? You know, I was too little, but I'm old enough to understand them now. Can we watch the second movie after this one's over? I have a better idea. Anybody home? Oh, good morning. Good morning. What's going on here? I stayed up late reading Twilight. I loved it when Bella first dreamed about Edward. Oh, me too. The part where Jacob appears? Wow. We must have lost track of time. We ought to get going, Megan. All right, I'll grab my stuff. These books are the best. Would you mind if I borrowed this one? Oh, no, go ahead. Thanks. 
You it, two really seem to hit it off. How'd you do it? I guess a good book can still bring people together. Okay. So, Ivania, we're going to be taking a look at that unit three, and you're going to go with your partners and discuss and review unit three, okay? Ah, okay. Okay. Hey, Marcel. from a friend okay and then what we're gonna do is uh, how we're addressing the person and who we're addressing right and the level of confidence that you have with the person so for example if you're asking a very close friend to lend you five dollars usually you'll make the request by simply saying can I borrow five dollars I'll pay you back tomorrow However, if you're asking your manager to give you an extra day off, you'll typically ask by saying, I wonder if I could take an extra day off. And the reason is simple. It's because it's not what you say, but how you say it. It's more likely that if you ask in a very polite manner, you'll get what you want. In certain cases, of course. So that's what we're going to learn today. So let me introduce uh, some structure. This topic, by the way, it's quite simple. Uh, what we want to do is we want to use uh, models, we want to use if clauses and gerunds. So just uh, uh, let me point out what those are. Uh, just a quick reminder, you're probably familiar with this already. Uh, but what are, uh, so what are models? Well, those are models are uh, those model verbs that you see there, can, uh, could, and also would, right? Uh, and um, if clauses, well, those those are simply uh, whenever you see do you mind if, right? Whenever you see this word, that's what we refer to uh, an if clause. Um, and then uh, the last thing that uh, we want to learn there is how to use gerunds to make this kind of request. Uh, and so that's that example that you see there. Would you mind letting me use your laptop okay and what we mean by this is that we're gonna use a gerund right so would you mind after would you mind um, we're gonna have to use a gerund and I'm gonna quickly point that out here in a second so let me just quickly point out the examples that we see here so as you can see we on the left we see that if I use the expression can I borrow your pencil that is something that I will typically ask a friend, someone that I'm very close to, right? So it's uh, uh, an informal way. It's not rude, by the way. It's it's simply uh, the other ways to ask are just a bit more polite. Can I borrow your pencil? Could you lend me a jacket? Jose, you okay? We're gonna. Would you mind letting me use your laptop? I wonder if I could borrow some money. Um, and finally, um, I was wondering if you mind lending me your car. So I'm gonna say we're gonna send you to the group so you can review, okay? Jose, so you're gonna go to the groups and we're gonna we're reviewing unit three, okay? Unit three. Thank 
And so uh, for today's class, the situation is uh, by us changing the verb to the past, this makes that request even more polite, right? Now, this doesn't mean that you cannot make the request without changing that verb to the past. You can do that if you want. So you could say, would it be okay if I borrow $20? You don't necessarily need to change that to the past. However, um, we're learning that um, we're going to change into the past in order to sound more polite, right? Will be another way to say this. Well, we can say, um, would you mind if I borrow $20? That's another way of, of saying it. Um, and I want you to pay special attention to the next expression, would you mind lending me $20? So in this case, whenever you see would you mind, the expression would you mind, without the if, right? Whenever you see the expression would you mind, this is always going to follow a gerund. So it's always going to follow a gerund. Would you mind lending me $20? The example that we see uh, in this little chart is would you mind letting me use your laptop, as you can see. So we had to change the verb let to um, a gerund. Uh, and let me just point out the other two examples there. So those would be, I wonder if I could borrow $20. And I was wondering if you mind. Hello, okay. All right, guys. Okay. Richard, I have a question. Yes, of course. Uh, the infinitive form of a verb is uh, the, the real form, right? For example, the infinitive of run is the same, run, right? Yes, it's the infinitive. Many times the people is, for example, the one that you are saying is to run. That's the infinitive way, right? That's the infinitive, that's right. Mm. Okay. Only, Thanks. yeah, no problem, Wilbur. Only that? Yeah, we were talking about that, the infinity form. Okay. So we have quite a few different forms. And the one of the things that we had was right here, right? Using the models. Could you lend me? Um, do you mind if I borrow? Would it be okay by? Okay. Some of them you have to pay attention because some of them, you use with ed or you use the past tense and others you use with ing okay usually the one that most people have to remember is the one with mind because if you say mind and you do not have a person is ing do you mind cooking dinner do you mind uh, watching my food okay or would you mind both forms are correct but if i say do you mind if or do you mind if I, if, if you have the person like I or I, then you don't use ing. So just be careful with that one. That's usually the one where most people get confused. Okay. Any, okay. Yes, any other uh, parts or where you, mm, I don't, I didn't understand like the indirect questions or the, I have, I have a question mm -hmm. uh, specific in, oh. In, in the 3.12. Okay. I know, no, wait, wait, wait. The 3.4, the knowledge check. Let's take a look, 3.4 specific, okay? Okay. And it's the, the sentence number three. Three, okay. 
Uh, it says, uh, you want a friend to help you move on Saturday. Could you, and then you answer, right? Uh, uh, I, the correct way is, could you help me move on Saturday? That's the correct way. But what if we, uh, in, this, in these sentences, what this sentence, what if we, we put, uh, help me to move. Is it okay? Find out as far as the the platform. No, in the platform it's not correct. In speaking, it is correct. In the platform is or is not, not correct, correct, but but in speaking is correct. Could you help me to move? Yes, but in speaking is is used. Could you help me to which is the cool. right? Could you help me? Uh, well, technically, grammatically, um, yes, speaking, the people use the two, but grammatically, remember, it's only the verb. It's not the two. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So as an example, I say, hey, Jonathan, could you help me study for the exam? That's the correct way. Even if people say, could you help me to study? Uh -huh, yes. But both are correct or... Nos van a ver como que estuviéramos hablando como Tarzán en inglés. No, no, that's how the Americans speak. That's what they use. They, they use with the two. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. That's the normal so you way. you can they... use either both ways. You can use both ways, uh, but the correct way is without the two. Without the two? Without. The correct way is only the verb. Mm. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yes, because you're going to hear, can you help me to prepare the dinner? But no, it's not to prepare the dinner. Could you help me prepare the dinner? But how, how it sounds for, how sounds, uh, how it sounds for a native speaking speaker? That's how, that's how they say it. Two. Yes. With, with the two. Uh -huh. Yes. The and why is it correct? Because it, the grammar, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. ¿Y por qué lo dicen así entonces, si tan malo? O sea, ellos hablan mal también. Igual que porque el salvadoreño dice, vuela. ¿Qué dice? Puchica, va. También está malo, también. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They don't exist. Ok, ok. Que uble. That doesn't exist, but it happens. So, ¿no? Huh? Just because it's common, you hear, and it's not that it's not that the Americans say it. It's the urban society. These are the rappers, the African Americans, the low income people that you're going to hear like this. Perdón, de de indio y qué es eso? The the what, Leymar? What's the the chat? What is the indio? What does that mean? Let me see. Let me see the chats. Hace un rato. Like what you said in Spanish is. <laughs> then the hoy. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So you know, it's just it's just part of the the culture that if you understand the culture, it's easier to communicate. It's not correct grammatically, but you are going to hear people that say it, but you're not going to hear everyone say it. That's the difference. Just like in Spanish, you're going to hear people. I hear people, but I don't hear everybody. Que uh, uvale. Like que uvo. Que uvo, yeah. But it's not correct. And it's not, it's, in, it's not normal, but I hear it normally from people that clean, that do the cleaning or people that are the security guards. So it's usually a kind of a social status because the people that you speak like this are usually lower economically. I remember one advertisement of, of Budweiser beer that many people said, what's up, what's up, what's up? Mm -hmm. uh, what's up, I think it's, it's they, they mean to, to say, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. We have the app. Mm -hmm. Okay. Were there any other questions for unit three? Anything else that you say mm, it's not clear or you didn't understand?
No, you feel you feel unit three is good. You feel prepared, unit three. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right then. Well then, it's like a while ago. Okay. I think yes, yes, yes. That's right. Okay. Well, in that case, perfect. Then we'll continue, and we're gonna go on to the. Unit four, so now with our partners, the same activity, review, take a look at all of the verbs, sorry, all of the videos, make sure that it's clear, the vocabulary and everything, and then we'll come back and make sure if, I, if you have any questions, I'll help you answer them. Hey guys, you're not going to believe this. I just heard a story about this campground. What do you mean? What about it? I was just at the bathhouse. I had taken a shower and was brushing my teeth when this woman came in with her daughter. She, she was telling her the story, so I listened in. What's so interesting about this old campground? It isn't scary, is it? Because scary stories freak me out. Don't be such a chicken, Molly. Come on, Ellen, tell us the story. Well, this all took place many years ago. Before it was turned into a campground, this land had been a farm. It was owned by a young couple named Theodore and Dolly McShane. Mr. McShane had inherited the land from a relative. So, what's so scary about that? I thought this was supposed to be a spooky story. I'm getting to that, just wait. The McShanes were wonderful people. Friendly, sociable, everybody loved them. And they really, really loved each other. Everybody could see it. When they were walking down the street together, they always held hands. When he was working in the fields, he always picked her wild flowers and brought them home to her in the evening. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. Oh no, then something bad happened, right? Yes. One day, as Theodore was coming home from town, he saw smoke in the distance. It had been a very hot, dry summer, so fires were a real danger. And was there a fire at the farm? Yes, and as he was hurrying down the road, the smoke was getting thicker and thicker, blacker and blacker. All he could think about was his wife. But by the time he got home, the house was completely in flames. He screamed Dolly's name over and over, but she didn't answer. She was in the house? She died in the fire? Yes. It was a terrible tragedy. What happened then? Well, the poor man went crazy. He refused to believe that Dolly had died. For months, he searched for her. He walked all day and night through the countryside and through the town, searching, searching. And in his hands, he always carried a bouquet of wild flowers for his poor dead bride. So how did it turn out? What finally happened to him? That's the spooky part. It's a mystery. People saw him less and less. And then Theodore McShane just disappeared. No one ever saw him again. But the people who live here say he still walks the forest at night looking for his lost bride. Whoa! 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you, ladies. I was making my rounds and wanted to see if everything is all right. Yes, a park ranger, of course. Yes, everything's fine. Ellen was telling us a spooky story when you came by. Campfire stories, huh? That's always fun. Well, okay, then. I'll let you get back to it. Thanks for checking on us, and sorry about the screams. Oh, that's okay. I'm used to it. Hey, in the morning, you ladies should take a look down that path. There's a field full of wildflowers in there in bloom right now. Very pretty. Oh, that's good to know. We'll do that. Thanks. Here's some for you to enjoy. In case you need anything, I'll be at the ranger station. Thanks again. Oh, what's your name? I'm Ted. Theodore, really. But my friends call me Ted. Ted McShane. You have a good night. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you'll learn the difference between the past continuous and the simple past. Additionally, you'll learn how to express your ideas using both tenses. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to learn is that we'll use both tenses together in order to express complex sentences. So let me give you a quick example. If you want to explain that you were doing an activity such as eating dinner and you were interrupted. Uh, let's say by uh, a friend or someone called you. In order to express this idea, you must use the two tenses together. So, for example, I was eating dinner last night when my girlfriend called me. So, let's look at the definition. We use the past progressive with the simple past to describe an action that was interrupted by another action. So, if we look at this example here, they were enjoying the morning. This is the action that was in progress. And there was an interruption. That interruption was that when the thief stole the briefcase. So now let's look at some other examples. So we got about two or three examples here. And um, again, we are trying to express that whole idea that there was a continuous action happening in the past and there was an interruption that occurred. So the example here is while he was escaping from the bank, the robber got caught in the revolving door. So if we look at the timetable here at the bottom, we can see that the past event was, or the past continuous event was, that he was escaping from the bank. All of a sudden, this action was interrupted by this blue event, which is the robber got caught in the revolving door. Um, and then the next example is quite similar. As Jake was running towards the ball, he tripped and kicked it into the wrong goal. The last one is uh, similar. The secretary was making a speech when a protester threw an egg at her. Um, just a quick reminder here. Um, also something that we should uh, keep in mind is that usually, not all the time, while and as will follow a past continuous statement. So as you can see, while he was escaping from the bank, as Jake was running. So typically, these words will follow a past progressive um, statement, if you will. So what we're going to try to do next is we're going to look at a small paragraph, and we're going to try to make sense of it. I will do this one together with you guys, and you will do the next one. So what we want to do here is, number one, we want to identify if the statement will be in the past progressive form or it will be a simple past form. In order to do that, we must follow this um, concept that I mentioned that we will use the past continuous for an action that was in progress and the simple past for an action that interrupted that particular action. So the two events are related to one another. 
um, sometimes the events may be separate from each other, and that's when uh, that's the kind of thing that you need to understand. So let's look at the first one. What you're going to do is you're going to use these verbs in parentheses that you see here, and you will either turn those into a past progressive form or a simple past form. So while diverge, as I mentioned previously, uh, typically we will use whenever you see this word, it will typically follow a past progressive form. But let's make sure that it makes sense. While so while divers were working off the coast of Florida, they and here we should use this verb. Okay, but then we have to change that into a past progressive form. So let's see. So while divers were working off the coast of Florida, they discover a shipwreck containing gold worth two million dollars. So yes, it looks like this first event is related to the second sentence. Therefore, this is the action that was in progress, and this next sentence is the interruption of this event. So let's kind of like make it work. So while divers were working, that will be our first answer there. Off the coast of Florida, they discover a shipwreck containing gold worth two million dollars. Okay, so that makes sense for the first one there. Now let's look at the next one. The divers. Uh, and also the next sentence also appears that there was an action that was in progress and then there was an interruption. Okay, so this one, uh, we're going to use the verbs in parentheses. So, so the divers and we're going to say where we're going to take that verb and we need to change that into a progressive form. We're filming a show about the coral reef when they found the gold. And we also need to change that verb into a past form. So there we go. OK, so what I would like for you to do is to identify whether the sentences are related to one another. And if so, Identify what was the action that was in progress and what other action interrupted that first action. So you're going to do this using the past continuous and the simple past form. Therefore, I would like to spend a few minutes giving lots of examples. So if um, we write the example that I, I gave to you in uh, just a couple of seconds ago, um, I, let me write that down. I went to a party last weekend, but uh, when I got there, my friend had eaten all the food. Okay, so if we think about that example there, what I'm doing is I'm talking about two events that occur in the past. And it's important for me to relate the two because that will uh, emphasize my idea. It will outline what I'm trying to express. I went to a party last week. This is what took place last weekend. So that is that X, if you will, all right? But when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that in a different color. Um, my friends had eaten all the food. This is the event in the circle that you see there. This happened before I got to the party. So whenever I say I went to a party last weekend and my friends ate all the food, what that means is that I went to the party and when I got there, there was food at the party and then my friends ate it. But that's not really what I want to express. What I really want to explain is that I went to the party and there was no more food left because something had happened before that and that was the fact that my friends ate the food. So that's why this is really important. You need to know when to use this particular topic. So I'm going to continue to give you more examples. Now let's look at the examples on the chart. As you can see, the examples on the chart um, refer to uh, basically it's a uh, it's a person that uh, was at the gym and uh, he forgot 
to lock his locker, and therefore this is what took place. Right? Uh, so we'll analyze the examples that are there. I was working out, and I have put my stuff in my locker. All right, wait, let, let's stop there for a second. I was working out is the past event. That's that X, if you will. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to relate the second event to that past event. And I have put my stuff in my locker. So th that I have put my stuff in my locker is the past perfect event that happened before this past event. So it's that little blue circle that you see there. When I came back, that's that event there. That's the uh, past event. Okay. Someone had stolen my wallet. So um, I came back, but before this event, someone had stolen my wallet. All right. They were able to steal it. That's the past event. So that's that X, if you will. Because I have forgotten to lock the locker. All right. Now, that is the past perfect event, as you can see there. Let me just give one last example here. All right, so how about that part? How are you guys feeling with the past, the simple past, the past continuous, the past perfect? Mm, are you confused? Uh, do, you, do you remember the difference, how to use them? Mm. Well, I think I'm clear with that. Okay, anybody else? When, when you use, for example, the verb be in the past perfect, uh, for example, have you ever been the next verb is in ing? Yes, that is correct. If you use been, the next verb is going to be have you ever been uh, fishing? Have you ever been skiing or swimming? Okay. Um, and that's the proper with have. The past is had. Right? If you don't use been, then okay. it's only the verb in past participle. I had gone. I had seen different things. Okay. So uh, as an over, overview, Simple past, sorry, simple past, completed actions. Past continuous is not completed actions. Past perfect is used with two actions. One action happened first and then another action. So one more time, simple past, completed actions. Past continuous, not completed actions. And past perfect, for two actions in the past. One action happened before the other, like here in the examples, right? So here, I was working out, not completed, and then I had put my stuff in my locker. This happened before I was working out, okay? When I came back, someone had stolen my wallet. Someone stole my wallet before I came back. That's how you have it. All the words with had, and past participle is the first action. The other simple past or past continuous is the second action, but had is the first action. Is that okay? okay. Yes. Can you yeah. repeat it, please? Of course, Selimar. One more time. Let me show you one more time the screen and I'll explain everything. Okay. So let's start off a little bit over here. Let's start with this one. Simple past and past continuous. Let me see. Okay. Let me see something that we can use. Okay. So what's the difference? Simple past and past continuous. Past continuous is the verb to be, you see, with ing. So that's the past continuous. The verb to be and ing. That means the action is not completed. Simple past is the action is completed. When you put in the sentence, when you put both of them in a sentence, how do you know? Well, the action that was 
started first or the action that was not completed is interrupted by the simple past. This action stops this one. So as Jake was running towards the ball, Jake was doing this action. This second action here interrupted the running. He tripped and kicked it into the wrong goal. That's the past continuous and the simple past. In the perfect, we use the perfect tenses. Let's take a look here. Past perfect. There we go. Even in this. Okay, in the past perfect is had, as we can see here in the video, the had, subject had plus past participle. Whenever you had had in the past participle, this is the first action in your story, okay? So as an example, you, you know, you take a shower, you get dressed, you have breakfast. So what happens first? Ah, I take a shower. So what you say is I had taken a shower before I prepared breakfast, right? It's just to give the person the order of how the events happen. Thank you. Yeah, I got it. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, I have another question, but it's not from past participle or... or... It's okay, Jonathan, go ahead. Okay, uh, there was a sentence that it says, I was shopping. So okay. uh, shopping uh, with the ing, the mm -hmm. verb also use double p shopping. Correct. Yes. Uh, there are some. Are there some other verbs that we use two times later? Yes. All the verbs that have one vowel, you use double the letter. So if it's a consonant plus a vowel, then it's going to be double the letter. Or sorry, uh, sorry, is the other way. So if it's, sorry, vowel plus the consonant, then it's going to be, can I put it? Vowel, consonant. Vowel, consonant, double consonant. Stop. Okay. You see, we have a vowel, A, E, I, O, U, only one oh. vowel in the word. Stop, it's another example, yes. Uh -huh. And yes. then you have double the letter, okay? Double consonant, okay. Mm -hmm. Stop, like, like if you are chat, chatting, for example. Uh, chat is the same rule, it has vowel, a, and then it has a consonant, T. So to put the writing, we need to put, for example, in ING, chatting. Oh, okay. In past, chatting, but you need the double because it has the rule, vowel plus consonant. Oh, okay. Hey, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Very good, very good tip. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Nati, you wanted to ask something before. What happened? No, I don't have a question. I'm good. Okay. All right. It's because I saw your microphone like three times on, off, on, and I say, mm, do you want to ask? You don't want to ask? It's only my computer. It's crazy. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, guys. Great. So now we have our ideas. We have the tasks, so hang on. Let, oops. Let me share my screen with you guys so that we can make sure we understand. So uh, this week earlier, we did unit five. That's why that one is not so much a review because we just completed it. But the idea was for uh, sections three and four of what we had, right? Um, the simple past, past continuous, the modal verbs, uh, the past perfects here. Um, are there any other questions before we go on? Just to make sure. No, 
No, no question. No. Okay, perfect and excellent. So you're going to go at section five. You should have finished already because we did many of the exercises in section five. You should be completed and only waiting for the final exam. When you finish 5.8, you click next, right? And we're going to see our final exam. The final exam has many areas. It has A through E. Part A is the listening. Uh, a good tip is first read the questions. First read the questions and the options. Then listen. After you listen or while, sorry, not after. While you are listening, go in the questions and answer them one by one. After you have answered them, listen again and check your answers. Do you think is correct? Did you hear correctly? Did you hear incorrectly? Is that the one that you wanted to select? And then you only put submit, right? So we're gonna listen two times, read first, listen, then check, then listen again and check your answers. That's for the listening. For letter B, it's just a request. All you're doing is exactly what we reviewed today. Could I, may I, would it be okay if I, do you mind? All of those you're gonna complete correctly. Okay, that's letter B. Letter C, it's a little bit easier because all you do is read and select which one of the sentences is the correct one. Just read and select which one. Letter D is you look, this is a story, right? This is what we were just talking about just a few minutes ago. Simple past, past continuous, past perfect. Remember, in if you have the three, the past perfect is the first action. The past continuous is the incomplete action. And the simple past is the action that interrupt the past continuous or is the action that is completed. So first action, action not completed and action that interrupts. It's okay, letter D, you read and then you put in the verb, the verb that is in parentheses, for example, here is play, here is not put, you put those in the correct form. All right, and then letter E, it's all about reading. You read the story, it's reading comprehension, and then according to the information from the story, you select your answers. And then when you finish, you go to the course, you get your grades, you get your diploma, and everything is good. Are there any questions? No. No? Okay. No. When can you do the exam? Let's see. What days do you have to do the exam? I think we already did the exam. Hey. How many people already did the exam? I did it. Wilbur, did you pass? I did. I did it. Yes, I did. I did okay. It, too. it is too. I did it too. Hey, yeah, Maritza did it too. I have the certification. <laughs> hey, wow. I have the best we have, class. We have the certificate uh, before a uh, vacation. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. It, for me, it's, it's better if you... If you can advance and you have it, it's better because then the class is more relaxed because you come to the class to learn and practice, not for, I, I need to pass. Oh, I have to worry for the exam. Oh, I need to complete the exercise. No, you come, you relax. This is the idea. The class is a, a place for you to relax, like the gym. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, you exercise, but you feel good. That's the idea for the class, not to feel stressed. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. The stress is at work the with the, the wife, with the husband, with the boyfriend, with the girlfriend. Ah, that is the stress. The class is the time to relax. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. So then everybody has a good weekend. They don't have to worry about, ah, I have to do this before Monday. I have to complete it or things like that. But remember, even if you didn't complete because many people did, but if you didn't, you have today, you have 
tomorrow, you have Saturday, you have Sunday, and even Monday before class. You have practically a week. You have five days to complete the activities before. I, I thought that uh, if you are the teacher, I thought that you have known that we all, most of us did the, the exam. No, no, el, no because- You don't have that I, access. I don't have access to you, only the, only the central office. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is for the, for the teacher not to manipulate or not to see the grades. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. That way, all, the, all of the data is in one place. That way, if there's a change, it's from administration. Only administration change your grade or see your information. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, because I remember in the chat, uh, they many, pe many, many people ask and take a, a print screen <laughs> 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 about the troubles of the Yeah, of the exam. yeah, yeah. It's and that's true. what I, I thought. I, I, I thought that that you 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 have seen that conversation or, or saw that. No, only I saw a couple, but I I, I didn't know how many. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, guys, a great thank you for coming. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Remember, we only have two more. Okay, two more classes. That's Monday and Tuesday, right? Monday is going to be a review of the exam, making sure all of the answers are ready. And then we have oral evaluations Monday and Tuesday, okay? Oral evaluation is only, again, speaking, telling a story, telling the different things. So don't worry. I'll explain on Monday, but you have a good weekend. You relax. in the platform. Claro, yo me imagino. Ahora sí vamos a estar relajados. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, guys, enjoy your weekend. Thank I see you on Monday. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night.